all right shalom amakim back at you with another video i want to give all praises to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai by hashem haraka kwadash double honors to all the elders and the apostles of great millstone for teaching us this truth sanitation to all the akim the afwakim and the wafbanyam the elect men women and children that are obedient to the order and rise up to the house of david yeah the spirit's got me back on this subject again of racism in football and it's a spin-off from that video I did on there will be a mass awakening on the footballer from the Netherlands who was describing how the, the abuse is um, quite rampant and what they should do um, trying to come to a solution and how to deal with it perhaps walking off the pitch but I'm going to go in on Le Les Ferdinand go in explain his experience this is the time of the 80s similar around it this is the time around the same time as um uh john barnes ian wright and they will give their two cents because the truth will always come out so i'm going to entitle this video something to that effect the truth always wins or the truth will always come out so without further ado i'm not going to play it to prevent myself from getting a strike just going to let you hear it I'm going to put it up raw, without further ado. I played non-league football uh, before I made it a professional football. And that was probably a regular occurrence when I was when I was playing non-league football. You know, people, because back then things were said, jokes were made that people thought um, was acceptable. Um, I let people know it wasn't acceptable in whatever way I needed to. Um, but it was part and parcel um, of playing football back then. What year are we talking about? We're talking about sort of like early 80s, um, late 70s, early 80s, talking about those sort of times. We're sitting here sort of like 40 years down the line, 30 years down the line, still talking about the same issues, but we're talking about at professional ranks when things can be done about it and people choose not to do anything about it. Yeah, so he said 40 years down the line, and, and, and what he's saying is nothing's really changed, you know? So let him go in. That's a big distinction. Mm, massive. Well, it brings us neatly on to your complaint as a result of what happened on the pitch. I know there have been quite strong representations from QPR, and yet four months on, the complaints procedure appears to have failed you. What's happened is we've found that uh, different jurisdictions have decided it isn't their problem so you need to go to UEFA, you need to go to Spanish FA, you need to go to FIFA with this, and, and then FIFA says it's not our problem, you need to go to UEFA, UEFA says it's not our problem. So, so no one wants to take responsibility for it. No one wants to say, well, look, this is happening. As a governing body, we need to do something about it. When this, this happened, you know, I sat down with Lee Hughes and we spoke about it, and I said, Lee this is the club's the, chief executive. She, who's got firmly behind this. Um, and I told him this was what was going to be the case. And um, you know he's he, he, he's pressing on with this, and he, he's going to take it uh, as far as he possibly can. Um, what did you say to? Him? I said you're going to go for a process of people not wanting to do anything about this. Um, we're going to pay lip service. Even our FA going to pay lip service to this, and say yeah, we're right behind you, but nothing's going to be done about it. Yeah, because his words were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. That's the that's who he's talking about. He's talking about the Edom. You know, the words are smoother than butter. Let's say that again. Do anything about this. Um, we're going to pay lip service. Even our FA going to pay lip service to this. And say, yeah, we're right behind you, but nothing. Yeah, he sort of likes his, the Edomite, them, the wicked. They love their, their lip service. His words are smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. It's going to be done about it. That's quite key because a lot of clubs don't have a black technical director, don't have a black senior figure to give them the kind of insight you're able to give QPR. And I would suggest that that's a big part of the problem, not just with English football, but with European football. Yeah, we've got a shadow of that. And, and, and the people um, trying to resolve the issues, uh, probably middle class, well-educated, Caucasian people who've never been racially abused. Yeah, he wants to say something. He wants to go in a bit more, but, you know, he's holding his tongue. 
is the Edomite them. You know what I mean? Is the Edomite them. The, the wicked. So when you're handing out a punishment for something you have no idea about, the punishments become very, very lenient, as we keep seeing time and time and time again. All right, let's, let's get a scripture out. Without further ado, I've got to interject with the scripture, Zechariah 11. What did, what did he just say? Time and time and time again, uh, punishment, when you have people who haven't experienced being racially abused, the punishment is, is always very lenient. Zechariah 11.5 says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. Yeah, as we've seen over there in, in America, many, many estates over there in America, many states over there in America, where they're, they're slaying the, the so-called niggers, you know, you know so-called black people, by the sword, which is the gun today, and holding himself not guilty and that's why you have all these uproars and protests you hear about black lives matter and you know that's where that's what's happening zechariah 11 5 whose possessors slay them and hold himself not guilty and in, in this case it's the racism where they're just passing the buck as he's saying passing the buck he he doesn't want responsibility he doesn't want responsibility that authority doesn't want responsibility and when they give out punishments, it's very lenient. And you know, and we know why the scripture that goes into that. We take the case of the boys who were racially abused recently um, in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria. For me, UEFA, FIFA, and all the people involved in this might as well have stood in the stands with those people that were making Nazi salutes and the monkey chants. Might as well have stood in the stands with them for the punishment that's handed out. To these people the people in power can um solve this problem if they want to but they don't really want to solve it because it doesn't affect them i've heard loads of different discussions about this subject and people talking about um should they ban them from competition um and people will say and a lot of people have come and on bulgaria yeah bulgaria should they be banned from competition and a lot of people came on and said well no that would be unfair be the minority um because it's it's a minority not the majority of supporters and I said, well, that's, that's fair enough. But many, many years ago, England were, were kicked out of Europe, European football, because uh, hooliganism right in Europe. Heisel. Yeah, after the Heisel disaster, we were kicked out of Europe for five years. Now, I know for a fact it weren't a majority of England supporters that were going and causing problems. It was a minority. But what they did, the minority got the majority punished. So sometimes you have to punish the majority because of the minority to, 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 to make any change. Alright, there you have it, that was on CNN News. Yeah, just turn on the news, on, on um, I happened to just turn on the news, and there it was, man. The footballer, the former footballer, Les Ferdinand was going in, you know, because 40 years later, it doesn't matter, that's, 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 um, that's nothing to the most high, 40 years later. And he's saying, it's nothing has changed, you see. So there's another one around the same time, a well-known footballer, you know. Some of you guys will know, will know, have heard of him, Ian Wright. Also going in, giving his two cents. Why? Because the truth comes out. It always comes out. So let's hear what he's, I'm interested to hear what he's got to say. This is Ian Wright on one of those talk shows, you know. And they're asking him questions about racism. Let's hear how he answers. What about modern footballers now? Modern day footballers dealing with a whole different kind of um, kind of vibe in respect to the social media and everything what he's mm. got to do and how he has to tread kind of lightly with what he's saying. You've got to understand that everybody's got an opinion on what you do. Everybody can reach you instantly and say something about how you've played or what you've got to do. And I'm not sure how I deal with the pressure of being uh, a top footballer in the current climate, it's too much. Pressure. What's your view about this current controversy about, you know, Sterling and Rose and the appalling racist abuse they they get in, particularly in Eastern Europe? It must yeah. Be said <clears throat> you all for the instant walk off, you know, just get off the pitch. Well, the thing about it is, is that you know we, we're still talking about instant walk off, where, you know, how, how many years we've been talking about instant walk off? Nobody walks off, but the fact is, is because the the, the punishment. See, he's in that 
you know, he's juiced in, you know, like a lot of them, and his hands are tied. You know, there's only so much he can say. But really, when you want the truth, you gotta go to you gotta go to the elders and the apostles, the man them that you see on the street corners. There is a paradigm shift. He saw, he's aware of it. This this truth will come out. No matter what they try and do, this truth will come out. Just as I mentioned in my previous video, there will be a mass awakening. So he can say he can only say Ian Wright, the former striker, England former striker, well known for his pace and running up the pitch and putting them away. You know, his hands are tied, but he, he can only say so much. This is this is him on a talk show. To walk off, you know, just get off the pitch. Well, the thing about it is, is that you know we, we're still talking about instant walk off. Where, you know, how, how many years we've been talking about instant walk off? Yeah. Nobody walks off. But the fact is, is because the, the the punishment in respects of black players being racially abused um, in Eastern on the Eastern Bloc, wherever it is, and here. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. And if you could see his body language, he, he's becoming a little bit agitated as he says that. The, the, the footballers that are being racially abused over in these European countries and here and his body language if you could see his body language uh, so this is a video Ian Wright gives his opinion on racism in football yeah because we see we see we hear what we see and what we hear is just um, a tip of the iceberg you can imagine what goes in in the changing rooms you know behind the scenes and Ian Wright's giving his opinion. If you want to see that video, Ian Wright gives his opinion on racism in football. Instant walk off where, you know, how, how many years we've been talking about instant walk off? Yeah. Nobody walks off, but the fact is, is because the, the, the punishment in respects of black players being racially abused um, in Eastern, on the Eastern Bloc, wherever it is, and here. Yeah, oh, yes. Let's not yeah. let's forget that. Change has to come from the authorities. They, they don't do enough. They don't ban, they've got closed down stadiums. You know, players shouldn't have to walk off a football pitch. They should be protected by the powers that be. A player shouldn't have to walk off a football pitch because he's on there to yeah. play. See? Yeah, and they're clapping in the audience. They're just as racist, man. It's all just a veneer, just to hide it. You know, the best way to hide it is in plain sight, isn't it? Acting like you want to solve the, solve the problem. And I was watching Ian Wright's body language as he was talking about the walk-off. We, we would like to walk off, but we won't. Know, we we won't get paid, man. His body language is getting all agitated. So um, there's only so much he can say. But the, the Most High, through the power of the Rakar Kodash, brought his men forward, the elders and the apostles, to speak this truth, man. To speak this truth, and the, and the, and there will there is a solution. When your whole shire comes back, there is a solution. I'll read that scripture again. Zechariah 11. It says, "Whose possession slay them." And hold himself in Zechariah 11 verse 5 whose possessions slay them and hold themselves not guilty and they that sell them say blessed be the Lord for I am rich and their own shepherds pity them not yeah and I brought out the, the other scriptures in if you check out that other video um, there will be a mass awakening the scriptures in Deuteronomy um, how it talks goes in about the curses how there will be subject to those proverbs those bywebs you know which means to be called all sorts of names under the sun and it still goes on today and Obadiah goes into how that how their hatred against Jacob they're going to suffer shame for it and Ezekiel I went in on Ezekiel 25 talking about the perpetual hatred and the most is going to bring back on their heads because of their perpetual hatred, what he's going to do to them, you know, the e them. So we see all this racism going on. The truth will win, you know, and we're encouraged to um, bring it out via the scriptures. I've got a scripture, another precept in Psalms 144 it says, Send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of the great waters. From the hand of the, the strange children whose mouth speak of vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Send thine hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of the great waters.
from the hand of the strange children. Yeah, they're strange, all right. Whose mouth speak in vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Yeah, that reminds me of this, the precept in um, Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 talks about um, verse 4. It says, the, the soul is not lifted up. The soul that is in them, that is lifted up in them, is not upright in them. So, you know, I just wanted to do that video. Spirit had me on this subject. I just turned on the news and this former footballer was going in, the time of the 80s. You know, he was going in, man. And he's saying, 40 years down the road and nothing's changed. So, this is through the Most High bringing it out. And he's going to, as its scripture says in Galatians 6 and 7, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. So, it's going to come back on their own heads, man. What they've been putting out is going to come back on them. And that's just the law of nature, as, as, as they say, as the people in the world say. That's just the way it goes. What goes around comes around. And it's scriptural. So I want end to end of this here video with one more precept. Because we've been encouraged to pray. And if you notice, I've been putting up my few videos on the prayers. You know, the curses and the power of the Most High's name. And how he answers our prayers. And that's by design I've been putting it up. Because it's true, man. I've I got a precept in... Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, yeah. So, don't un underestimate the power that you have through the power of Yehoah, why Yehoah shy through the Spirit, and using his name, Yehoah, by Hashem, Yehoah shy. When we say Yehoah, by Hashem, Yehoah shy, Shalak, Rayam. You put curses on these devils, man. Send evils, you know, to the Adawam, to the Adawam, and to the Adawam them, and to the Goyam them, you know. May it go upon them. I tar, I tar, I tar these curses, you know. And whatever they try to do against us, may it fall upon their own head. The things they've done past, present, and future. Agaye, Gashata, Bashimi, Oshai, I rebuke Satan. Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha, Baba Kusha. You know? So, I'll read it again. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, continue, I came to put up these curses on these wicked people, trying to hinder this truth. And also, the blessings on the Akim. Barak, 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 Barak. Call Akim. The sincere Akim. Barak, Barak, Barak. Call Akim, the elect of our people. Barak, Barak. Rapal, Sakala, Kor Akim, through the power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yerushai. You know? So I want to say all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yerushai, that were honest to all the elders and the apostles of the great middle son, teaching us his truth, and all, to all the sincere Akim, Shalom.